My name is Harold Kittler, and this is the second part of my lectures dealing with artificial intelligence and skin cancer diagnosis. This is my favorite lecture. Why? Because it deals with brand new data. I will show you data that have been published in Nature Medicine just one week ago. And I will also discuss with you the future of medicine. What could be more exciting? And uh, we will see how artificial intelligence will influence our daily practice and how it is already doing that. We cannot avoid it. We have to make the best out of it. And I'm optimistic. AI and humans will make a great team. And this is lectures also about how we can work together. And uh, those of you who have kids probably know this guy. This is a superhero. Why do I show uh, Iron Man to you? Well, what is the difference between Iron Man and the other superheroes? Like, for example, Superman or Spider-Man or, I don't know, the Hulk or Thor. Iron Man does not have superpowers. The man behind Iron Man is just an ordinary man without superpowers, but he uses technology, including artificial intelligence, to make him a superhero. This is the prototype of an augmented man, of an augmented human being. In the same way, we can have superpowers in medicine when collaborating with artificial intelligence, as you will see. Now, how can we work together with machines and artificial intelligence in many ways. Now you may think of apps, well, of course, smartphone apps, and telemedicine, for example, very important in the time of COVID-19. Not everywhere you have direct access to um, medical support and uh, or emergency rooms or whatever to dermatology service or the skin cancer. Uh, expertise, so skin cancer diagnosis. So telemedicine and teledermatology became increasingly important in the COVID-19 crisis because you do not have easy access to uh, health care as in the times outside the crisis. And telemedicine really had a boom. And I will also show you how we can improve telemedicine with uh, Taylor, uh, artificial intelligence. Now I can tell you many things and uh, you can believe me or not. I don't want to sell you anything here, uh, but I will bring you data. In God we trust, but the others have to bring data and I'll bring you data. We said the problem is a simple one with dermatoscopy. We have to differentiate the bad ones from the good ones. We have melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, pigmented squamous cell carcinoma, and the good ones, nevi, senile warts, seborrheic keratosis, terminal fibroma, and angioma. And I told you in my last lecture that we made experiments where we showed that at least in a very confined world, in a chess-like problem, computers are better than humans. Oh, this is, uh, let's say, um, this is not strong enough, how I said it. The computers blew us out of the ocean. They were better than all experts. And uh, we created this little app, as I told you, and the machines, they were much better and much more accurate than we were. But I also said that machines have some drawbacks. For example, they don't generalize well and that they don't have the general knowledge about the world as we do. As an extreme example here, I told you, machine can only diagnose what it knows only inside the seven categories. And the machine can't understand any jokes like this one. And if you have a wicked problem or a general world problem, the machines will be clueless. They need us humans, otherwise they are lost. So this is why we need human-machine collaboration. Now, and this is the topic of this lecture. How and uh, to which extent can humans and machine collaborate? 